Hello and welcome to Breaking the Cycle Two Step Forward podcast number 32. And today's title is The Past is the Past. Why can't you just get over it? I'm Beverly Ann, and today I'm joined by the lovely Chris Tuck, as always. <laughs> <laughs> and that sentence that I said, the past is the past, and why can't you just get over it? I don't know about you, Chris, it's something that people have said to me many times and, and recently as well, but not necessarily in a horrible way sometimes. It's just a lack of understanding. But Absolutely. that happened. 30, 40 years ago, why are you still living in the past? I know, and as soon as you said that, I had to bite my lip because I felt my back go up and my, ooh, um, because some people do understand and they still say it because they don't want to hear what it is you've gone through and how you've been impacted and you still continue to be Im impacted because they can't deal with it. Um, and also I've had it from the other perspective, Bev, where even I feel, have felt that someone has and continues to say the same thing over and over and they're not prepared to change. Um, even though you've had conversations, even though you've offered support and you've offered help, you've offered to refer them on, um, you've offered as much as you can give and there's nothing else to give. And that's when I check out personally, because it's like, yes, we understand that the impact of what you've gone through may still be with you, or you might have triggers, you might have flare ups, whatever you want to, uh, words you want to use to describe what it is you're going through. But at some stage, we do have to go, yeah, this is affecting me and I need to sort it, and only I'm the one that can sort it. So I do get why people say, why are you still going on about it? Because from their perspective, it might be just as I've described it, that you've offered, you've helped, you've supported, and there's nothing else you can give. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but I'm just saying from my perspective and how I feel. Um, I'm the first person to step forward and offer help, support, guidance, awareness, referral, whatever's needed. But even I do struggle with some people that either can't move on or won't move on. How do you find that? What, what, what are your thoughts about on anything that I've just said? Oh, well, absolutely. I really hear you. And that's, that's a big part of why we do these podcasts and we were talking about that before we recorded this session what's our objective and our objective is to raise awareness for survivors and those around them but also to give back and share insights to enable knowledge because when we have some knowledge we can then start to think how can I change it and often when we want to change things, that's not enough because the fear kicks in. And this is the bit that I love talking about because we often talk about mental health. So it's all in your head. And I like to describe that as mental health, mental wellness, even mental illness. It's a, we're describing an area that we feel it. So it's all in, you know, we've got thoughts going through our minds, we've got foggy brain, we've got migraines, and we can't think clear. However, it's not, it's, it's mental, but I like to say neurological, because it's the brain messages that are being received, and the brain is trying to find a way to keep us safe. And it's when the brain receives a message from a vagus nerve that something's not right, as we know, it goes into um, an alarm phase and then our left-hand part of the brain reacts. And that's when we get the triggers and the physical responses as we've spoken about before. But what we're trying to do when people say, but I can't, I can only think of the negative. What we're doing is reinforcing, we're finding the evidence to keep our body in that place of fear of survival mode 
And what we're looking to do, and it's not always easy, and that's the bit people find challenging. It's like we're going to look at some of these emotions that we've not wanted wanted to feel, and we're going to change the message and really open up the right-hand side of our brain. And when we're able to do that, one of the tactics that I personally like to use and I use this a lot professionally is looking at where we are today and then thinking of ourselves in a third person so I know you always laugh I call it we've we've spoken about note sticks in that but when I use post sticks etc I'm thinking of myself in a third person so it may be my younger self who's upset okay that's where the memory has come from Now, I'm not looking to go back to the experience and open that experience, but I do want to sometimes go back and think, how did I cope? How did I feel? Was I not heard? Was I upset? And what can I do today so I can put that memory to rest and put something else in place? So how can I reframe it? Because what we're trying to do is look at the memory from a different way. So it doesn't take away the experience, but it changes that message. And hopefully the the longer term response is to enable that memory to be given a beginning, be given a middle, be given an end. So that you can file it away, process it and move on. So you're yes. not in that negative loop or that negative cycle. Yes. And then when something does come up and you get triggered, you then have the tools to think, no, this is where I am today. That happened then because they're never going to stop. I'm not, and we're not saying that all of this is going to stop. But when we have the tools, we can think, OK, that happened then. I'm here today. And how I do that is I touch something. I look at something, I hear something and really bring myself into the moment. Now that's going into quite a detail, but I think it's important, especially for our listeners, because when I first said about the past is in the past and why can't you just get over it, there'll probably be quite a few people that were triggered in there and that and reacted to it. I've often been the other way, not saying I've never reacted in anger, But I've often tried to take a deep breath, calm myself down and then respond. So asking them, so when you grew up, what was it like for you growing up? Have you ever sat around a dinner table with the family to have a nice meal and somebody's banged the table and it's made you jump and you couldn't eat? Because often when you start asking those open questions, people then can relate it to themselves and then start understanding. Oh, yeah, I still don't like it when someone bangs the table today. So you're trying to set the scene for our listeners to explain why some people do go on about particular experiences all of the time because they've not actually dealt with it they've maybe suppressed it and it keeps coming up for them time and time again. That is why they're expressing it over and over or responding in the same way over and over. So it's having the understanding and the awareness that you've described over the last couple of minutes. That means that people can now learn um, or unlearn the way that they respond to a certain situation or a feeling and they can relearn to respond in a different way. And that's how we do move past the past. Absolutely. And when you're saying about, you know, anybody who's been there and they're unable to because they won't or they can't, mm-hmm. yeah. there's also the other side of it. The people, the carers, the people around the person, often there's fear there. So they, when even... You know, there will be some people that find it challenging to listen to our podcasts. Mm-hmm. Don't want to hear about that. You're talking about abu- abuse. You're talking about physical, okay. sexual, yeah. emotional abuse. I can't listen to this. 
-hmm. and that's their own fear because yeah it's a challenging subject and they may find it very challenging but we're actually speaking about it in a way to overcome and raise awareness in a positive form yeah but that doesn't mean to say it'll always be received like that and why do you want to continue having these conversations and that's when I personally feel it's important to say well actually silence makes it worse and by us sharing I like my personal is I like to think that if if at least one person is listening and takes from this what works for them Mm -hmm. then that's the objective that we do about this so if there's a person out there listening who is like what I described they've got someone in their lives who is stuck in this loop and they can't get past the past for whatever reason how would I better understand and better support that person that's going through this continuous loop how can I actually help them break that loop even though I've tried as much as I can with the knowledge and the expertise that I have how, how, how do we move on if we if we want to keep that friendship if we want to keep that relationship and we really truly do love that person but we feel like we've given everything what can we do next I know it's down to the person to make the changes but if they're stuck in that loop what can we do well first and foremost as you said we can't make someone do something but what's important as always it comes back to us first of all and unconditional love So first ensuring, do we know our own boundaries? Do we acknowledge our own boundaries? Because when we know our own boundaries and can look after ourselves, we are then in a place to be able to give unconditional love to that other person, give them space. And even when we hear the words positive reinforcing, so when they're displaying um, acts of, say, self-harm, through addiction it's it and it's very challenging I know that from a personal aspect because it's getting that balance you don't want to enable that person but actually your actions are hurting me as well because I love you and I want the best for you and I also have to respect that until they're in the right place to accept the help I can't change that so that's where we have to look at what are, what's right for us. If we were to, to keep them in our life, how can we communicate so they're in our life but keeping us safe? And that looks different for everybody. Is it just texting? Is it send, sending um, a card? Is it having a time that you see your friend or your family or someone, but you, you, you choose the time that you see them? Do you go to a neutral place? Do you go for a walk? So you're giving them the space and giving yourself the space to have a relationship and hopefully in the end, show them that, see, I'm loving you. Because let's be honest, we're human beings. We all want to be loved and accepted. Does Mm. that answer your question it it does sort of but it's just like this again every subject is complicated isn't it you want to be able to help everybody but we do know from personal experience that you just can't if that person is not willing to move forwards with you just even a little bit and they're so stuck in their ways it can almost become like kinder to be kind kinder to cut all ties um and almost see them fail before they wake up and really understand that it has to come from them and then you'll be there for them once they realize that absolutely and that is really really hard to do really hard because we talk about breakdowns and we talk about or breakthroughs we see that as breaking through but having the love for someone that's strong Mm -hmm. enough 
to step back, let them make their choices. They may not be the right choices for us, but for them, they are at that time. And often it's because they're in so much fear that they're so frightened of what's happened and their experiences that when you pull back, you're giving them space to actually experience what is going on. And when they do reach rock bottom, it's horrible, but that's when often people get that moment. And I remember that moment. I remember that. And then also for me, I got to the point, I'm so tired of mm -hmm. trying to hold everything together. Yeah. I am yeah. so tired of feeling horrible inside. Yeah. I am so tired of all this going through my head. I don't know what to do, but what can I do? And yeah. I also had somebody who said to me once, and they were very blunt, but I appreciated it. They said, look, you're in a place, and this was before I'd started to get my help. You're in a place, I was thinking about it. And she said, it's going round and round and round in your head. But I'm, what you're doing is continuing, and this is going to be hard for some people to hear. You're continuing the abuse from your dad in the way that you look after yourself. And I was quite shocked at first. And I won't say that again. Sorry, I just had yeah. an interruption. That's OK. They said you're continuing the abuse and the hold your dad has holds over you by the way you're looking after yourself. That is hard to hear, isn't it? Wow. It was really hard. And yeah. I won't lie, I didn't, I, I was speechless. And I walked oh, away from that person. It. No, I walked away from that person and I really had to think about it. But they also said, I'm saying this with love. Right. And it was only through working with someone, because I, I did agree, but I didn't know how I was. Mm -hmm. And then I realised, and we often do this, for instance, when we say, I wasn't heard. I wasn't heard as a child. But then I realised I wasn't hearing myself. What made you realise that? Well, I was doing it because I was working with somebody as well. Right. So I looked at all the things that I wanted. I wanted to be heard. Um, I wanted someone to ask me how I was. And I wasn't asking myself how I was. Oh, OK. OK. I get yeah. that now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be respected, but I wasn't respecting myself. Respecting right. So and that's that's how sometimes we continue it. And I know that's really hard for anyone listening. And that's why I'm sharing it from my own experience. But I sometimes think, Beverly, like, we've had this experience haven't we 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 know this insight but some people might be hearing this for the first time and it's almost like um we're putting blame on them um and we're we're sort of like that's what it comes across it can be heard like that absolutely and when someone said to me similar to you that you're responsible for your past and I'm like um what no no but I misheard them I misheard what they were saying um, you're not responsible for what happened to you, but you are now responsible for how you respond to things. And um, when I heard it clearly and I understood what it actually meant, then I could work with it. But we've got to hear what's actually being said and not misinterpret it. And Absolutely. we all do that, I think. Oh, communication and words have such different meanings. So, for instance, you're talking about what people say. It's like we are responsible for what we bring into our life and who we are. And I remember thinking, I'm not what? responsible for this. <laughs> However, yep. the one thing I love is how you break down responsibility. Yeah. You say the having the tools so you have the ability to respond. Yeah. And as soon as I heard that, the first time I heard that, I thought, I get it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so now I have the ability to respond in how I choose. So my body may respond in a trigger physically because yeah. that's the messaging it's received. But then I now have the ability to override that. 
and check in with myself, give myself the love, hear myself, what's the matter? Yeah, yeah. So again, going back to the question, why are you still going on about it? It could be genuinely that people have got to a place, the, the supportive people have got to a place where they just have tried everything and they're at the end of their tether with this particular person, individual or circumstance. And they've just got literally got nothing more to give. And we've explained that step back, put your own boundaries in place and then see where it goes. And it might be cruel to be kind. You have to break those ties and let that person um, experience what it is they're going to experience. Um, but there's a lot of fear there as well, Beverly, isn't there? Because of, you know, um, suicide, people taking their own lives and us all being aware of being there for people. And yet here we are saying you might need to cut ties and let them go to a place that's not comfortable for them. Yet we want to protect people from being so down that they don't take their own lives because of things that are going on for them. So how do we balance that? Well, one of the things that we can first do is communicate that, no, I'm going to step back. I, well, I can't do this say anymore. It. Actually, actually say, say it. it. And there are different ways of saying it. You can step back and send them a message. You can send them a card. You okay. can send a card and say, look, at the moment, I need some space for myself. I'm here in any times troubles. However, when you're ready, here yeah. is some support. So often and we don't talk about suicide enough. Suicide is something I always like to say, that when someone says, I feel suicidal, and even mm -hmm. if they don't say the words, you can um, look at the different signs. <clears throat> it's often saying, I want help, but I don't know how to ask for it. Right, yeah. So, you know, make sure that person, if you, you know, if you want to give some information to that person, give it on a card. I remember when someone gave me a leaflet years ago, and she wasn't involved in my life all the time. And I, I've spoken about this before. She gave me a leaflet and I was like, I don't need that. But I kept it. Yeah. I kept it. And when I did need it and when I was ready to accept that help, I used that leaflet. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what we can do is make sure they have information around. Yeah. But we have to be very careful here because this is about relationships and we have mm -hmm. to be careful about manipulation. Okay. OK, now that's not saying because here's another subject and we could go into this longer. Some people say, um, oh, it's just a cry for help. Absolutely it is. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody says I feel suicidal, it is absolutely a cry for help. Yeah. Let's not dismiss that. They want support. They just don't know how to access it. Yeah. But again, you can still set your boundaries in. OK, I can come over and take you to a and &E. I can do that. Do you see what I mean? So you're still looking after yourself, but and you're not you're not um, putting yourself in danger either because it has to come both ways. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about, really, isn't it? Is like understanding what you can give, what your own boundaries are, where you will be impacted because you're no good for yourself, let alone anyone else if you are impacted to a point. Um, but also being there in whatever capacity you can be. But also, you know, if you do understand why people can't sometimes leave the past in the past because they're dealing with their stuff and they're still going on about it, there are some people that genuinely don't understand this because they've not been through anything like this. So maybe it's up to us who are struggling and maybe can't leave a particular something in the past because it's raw and it and it's coming up day in day out to actually say well this is why I can't leave it in the past because it's making me feel so angry and my anger is boiling up in all of these different ways however it is you know showing up for you so maybe you actually communicate that to someone that may not know why it's still coming up for you and why you're still going on about it. You might have to educate them if you're able to. So verbalise, write it down, share it. Um, and then once they know more, 
then maybe they are in a better place to help and support you, you know? Absolutely. And we said before, the objective of our podcast, what it's for, give them the link, share this. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard this podcast? You know, there'll be other podcasts. There's loads of other podcasts. There's loads of information, you know. Um, so can't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of how you no. feel. No. Because you don't know what you don't know. But know yeah. that there's information you can look at there. And we say, we only wish we had this information, this trauma-informed information yeah. available to us years ago because it yeah. would have made such a difference. Yeah, definitely. I'm mindful of the time. Yes. Yeah. And I just want to go over a couple of things that you put forward before we started speaking. Um, and there's some really important things because sometimes it's, we don't realize what we have around us. And one of the questions you put was, what support do you have around you? So I'm gonna ask you, Chris, thinking back to when you, you were in that place of, I, I need to change things and I don't know how, what support did you first reach out to? I was speaking about this on a vlog that I did this morning, actually. And it, for me, I've learned that education and information is power. And it gives me, it empowers me. It gives me freedom to understand what's going on for me and what help and support I may be able to tap into. And often the help and support that I've gone after, I've had to save up the money to actually access it so I've had to make almost I'm, I've almost had to go right these are your symptoms this is how you're feeling what has caused that what is the actual cause of all of that and now what help and support is out there and what is it you feel you need um, and what are the resources you need to go after all of that um, and sometimes it's been a life coach, sometimes it's been a business mentor, sometimes it's been actual education that I needed, and sometimes it's literally been someone to listen to me and what's been going on for me. So not an easy one to answer, but for me, it's about finding out what is out there, what is it that I need, and then making a plan of action and go after it. That's, that's what I would say. What about you? And it's really good to hear this because it's completely different because I was always, I'm strong. That's back then. I don't cry. I'm proud that I don't cry. I can do this. I can change this. I'm not going to be defined by my past. Absolutely. But then it took me to crisis point where I felt everything was unraveling before I reached out. But I had the information to reach out. So for me, the very first time I reached out, I reached out to Samaritans. Literally helped me. I don't understand what's going on. This is how I feel. And I was at crisis. I was in, I was disassociating everywhere. I was literally, it's as if I'd been on some weird drug, my whole body reacting. That was the first time. And then they put me in contact with someone. And then the next time it started to happen, I was like, whoa, I don't, and I'd forgotten. So that's why I want people to understand it may be our professions now. We may have come a lot longer, but it didn't happen the first time. I needed to go back another time before I actually, I wasn't getting the message because for me, I wasn't going to be vulnerable and I couldn't ask for help. Because vulnerability to me meant that I was unsafe. And asking for help meant, in my mind, that I was weak. That's not, I've, I've reframed all of that. And now, as I've said before, that's probably been my biggest learning in my recovery. And, I, and I'm a thriver now. I don't just survive, I thrive. Not saying we learn everything because we're human beings, but that has made a difference. Another great question you had here or a thought about it is the environment that we've been brought up in and what's around us now. Mm. What are your thoughts about environment? 
such a big topic. Why do you throw this in at the last minute? Um, so for me, um, obviously, I'm free. It's calm. It's healthy. It's mine. So I feel safe. So I feel I can thrive. Yeah. When I was younger, <laughs> yeah, we had a roof over our head, but the people in it were unsafe. Um, I moved home seven times, so I never knew security. I never knew stability. I knew a lot of fear and I knew a lot of violence. So environment is really important for how you feel and how you recover and how you respond to the world around you. So, yeah, a massive question. <laughs> yeah, and we can go deeper into this. Yeah. I'm just going to share what's important about environment as well, because I have had two flashbacks recently to very different occasions. So when I was a child at the worst part um, as a young teenager and caring, um, I tried our home was absolutely chaotic, not okay. just in the emotions and everything else, but yeah. the clutter and everything else. And even at that young age, I tried to unclutter it and I love nothing more than watching those programs when they declutter their homes and 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 refine them do you know what I mean and make the house beautiful and I was watching one the other day and as soon as it finished it suddenly took me back to all those years ago because it looked identical the layout to where I was and I put the tables and chairs together. They were a slightly different shape, but it took me straight back. That feeling was there. And it actually brought up a feeling in me. But again, I was able to check in. It's okay, this is where I am. And also there was a bit of tears. Oh my, oh my how young you were. And put my arms around and say, well done. Then um, the next one was walking past a shop and just walking past and seeing some furniture that was painted in the colour, going back to there. Now, our automatic fear is, is it taking us back to those experiences? Are we going to go down the trauma tunnel? Not necessarily. What it's doing is our bodies reacting and thinking, are we back there? And again, no, take a big deep breath, no. And actually now I can laugh at it and walk past that shop and think, God, actually that looks lovely because I'm reframing it and I'm letting the new, as I said right at the beginning, I've changed the neuro messaging. So we don't stop what we do, we change how we look at the memories and then we're able to file it away. It's almost like you update it, the memory, like you say, reframe it, you update it to what is going on right now. And actually, no, like, did you notice that I was looking around, you're calm, safe, right, stability, security. Yeah. And then yeah. comparing it to what it was like and understanding that that is in the past. Yeah, yeah. it might come up and flash the trigger, but no, ground yourself. This is the environment you are now. That is in the past. Try and let it go. And that's my word for 2023. Let it go. Yeah. Keep reminding myself, let it go. So I think we've touched on all areas of the past is the past. Why are you still going on about it from a perspective of not understanding, from a perspective of understanding and being able to give them support from understanding and going oh my god yes even I have done why are you still going on about it and actually reframing all of that so I'm hoping that we've not triggered anybody or upset anybody or offended anybody and we do apologize if we have because that was never our intent our intent is always to raise awareness and to give some insight and to actually just share that we're all human and we do all have those thoughts. Um, and we would love to hear what everyone else out there has got to say about this, actually, don't we? 
Absolutely. And there are several ways. You can email us. So breaking the cycle to step forward at gmail.com. We have longest, longest. <laughs> but breaking the cycle Email. to step forward. <laughs> that's the easy part. And then yeah. at gmail.com. We also have a breaking the cycle to step forward Facebook page. And I'm not saying that we're on Facebook all the time. So there's information there, but you can visit it, follow it, and then you can see updates. Um, and we also have an Instagram page as well. But I think the easiest way is if you're listening to this email through email, if you're listening to this podcast through Podbean, you can actually click on different tabs and contact us. Lovely. That that would probably be easier for people. Or the YouTube channel, they can leave comments underneath each of the vlogs. Yep. Podcasts. And we, and we welcome all comments and we appreciate mm -hmm. that some people may react to this and feel quite angry. Yep. Anger we can accept, but please be mindful as well. We are human beings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, you know, we acknowledge anger. But there's a way of asking things or, or telling us that we're wrong or telling yeah. us that you disagree with us. But this is what you think. Absolutely. And that's right. So different, yeah. Different opinions make the world go round, don't they, Bev? And that's the wonderful thing about being able to have a discussion. And then yeah. you can make an informed choice. You're hearing that side. You're hearing another side. And then you can think, mm, I'm going to try this. Fantastic. Yeah, don't agree with us. Tell us why. We'd love to learn and maybe grow from what you have to say to us and maybe not and vice versa. That's what this is all about. And I think you've said it perfectly. We've come to the end of this podcast. And thank you very much, Chris. And thank you, Beverly. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And please do get in touch. Until next time. Bye. Bye for now.